Hey guys, it's Mr. Scott. I got up really early this morning on Monday morning and um, thought it might be a really good time to read you a uh, story since the world's kind of quiet right now. So I had a long night last night. I didn't sleep very good. So thought I'd get up and spend a little time with y'all. But um, I'm going to read one of our favorite stories, The Sneeches by Dr. Seuss. We've read that one in the Caterpillar class a lot. It's a really, really good story. And uh, so let's hear it. The Sneeches. There they are. Now the star-bellied Sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain-bellied Sneeches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big. They were really so small, you might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars at the star, uh, all the star bellies, Sneeches would brag, were the best kind of Sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they'd sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with that plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You could only play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon theirs. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts, or picnics, or parties, or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away and never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Oh, look, he's getting all their money. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. He said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for three dollars each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, and the big machine roared. And it clonked, and it bonked, and it jerked, and it burked, and it bopped them about. But the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties, and now we can go to your frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they're still the worst. But now how in the world will we know, they all frowned, if which kind is what, or the other way around? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink. He said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who, that's perfectly true. But come with me, friends, do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on the beaches, and all it'll cost you is ten dollars eaches. Oh, he's a trickster, that Sylvester McMonkey McBean. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star-off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars, so you won't look like sneeches who have them on theirs. 
and that handy machine working very precisely removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then, with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout, We know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star-off machine. And then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. Look at that. All the rest of that day, on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines, they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, and they kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Oh, man, they're running every which way, all confused. They don't look very happy. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn. Nope, you can't teach a sneech. Oh my goodness, look, he's got all their money. Look at all that. Oh, he tricked them good. But McBean was quite wrong, I'm quite happy to say, that the Sneeches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that Sneeches are Sneeches and no kind of Sneeches the best on the beaches. That day all the Sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. It's one of Mr. Scott's very favorites. I love that story. Good old Dr. Seuss. That's my huge Dr. Seuss book. It's got a bunch of stories in it. Well, boys and girls, I'm glad that I got to read you a story this morning. Um, whether you have a star on your belly or not, Mr. Scott loves you very, 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 very much. And that's something that'll never change, I promise you. And, uh, you know, maybe that would be a great thing to tell other people right now. No matter who you are, no matter what you might look like, I love you. I think people love to hear that. So I hope you'll have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Love you, kiddos. Bye.